to Andy Wanders and uh, our second art exhibition of dream images, dreams that Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, modernists, would say come from the unconscious. But traditionally, people have understood dreams as being possibly divine. They're able to give us instructions about life. The Jews uh, in their scriptures show some of their characters like Joseph receiving important dreams about his mission and also given warnings about the people in Egypt he managed to interpret the king's dream or the pharaoh's dream which enabled many nations to be saved from famine and in Jesus' time his foster father Joseph received several dreams regarding Mary and his family. <coughs> and I had a dream just before this exhibition which said put Mary in the exhibition and that's very happy and inspired by this because logically uh, it would be thought that possibly Jesus instructed me to do this because um, he always kept the commandments and he honoured his father and mother, Mary as his mother. And so he wanted to honour her in this exhibition, but also he probably wanted me to honour Mary too, because um, he said that his mother was the mother of all his disciples, so uh, all Christians should honour Mary and in fact she said in scripture that all generations will call me blessed, all generations will honour Mary. So I'm glad that Jesus reminded me to put her in there. But also she is the, the woman who fights against the devil. She was prophesied in one of the creation stories and the fall when God cursed the serpent God said I'll put enmity between you and the woman
and so Mary is always for the chief enemy of Satan of the devil And so it's interesting that in this image it is like the Genesis creation story where Adam and Eve are contemplating eating the fruit. But in this instance it's called globalization. So it begs the question why this globalization in this instance a forbidden fruit I put Martin Luther here because I think the answer is, is that um, it's when we start focusing too much on wealth and work and see some sort of global aspiration for our work and Luther was the first to turn Christians away from the church and the sacraments and to focus more on labour and our work and to inspire to be good Christians through our work and I think this is a temptation and then Calvin the next character here eating the fruit told his followers that the accumulation of wealth is not a bad thing it's actually a good thing it shows that you're a good Christian and that third character there has just disappeared um, John Wesley a century or two later realised that actually the problem of religions is that they become wealthy and their wealth corrupts them and so here they solve a problem I'd just like to read the part where God is addressing the serpent after he's tempted the people to eat the forbidden fruit. I shall put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. She shall crush thy head And thou shall lie and wait for her healing. And so there was this spiritual battle right from the beginning between the devil.
this work we have modern art next to the Anglican Church again it sort of shows the connection between the Protestant Reformation and modernism the people turned away from the church and sacraments they turned towards the world and slowly and gradually they focused more on wealth and labour and less on the supernatural before Protestantism the accumulation of wealth was seen as an obstacle to faith and was frowned upon but with rationalist capitalism which came with a Protestant ethic of accumulating wealth and investing it back into the business industry grew much much bigger and he said that was really the reason for the industrial or the, one of the main supports of the Industrial Revolution that this spirit of capitalism that accumulating wealth is not a bad thing as long as you don't waste it on indulging your desires but in this work here I have um, several scenes of things that happened in this location and I've put them all together there's the modernist artworks, there was a man who was being attacked by a serpent and there was the Dark Knight of the Soul black painting of the three images seeming to rise in prayer Protestantism did was 
I turned away from monastic prayer. Um, I turned away from the idea of penance. I need to go to church to have your sins forgiven. Uh, and it rejected the idea of purgatory. All those things are sort of like part of the traditional Christian understanding of living, which was to grow in sacredness and that sacredness was what growing in divinity was called the theosis that ethic of improving through the religious life but that was sort of given up and a lot of the Protestant countries focused more on work in the world This is uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's response to modernism. A guy sitting in a bath. And I sort of interpret it as being like the flood. So it follows on where the garden of Eden. <coughs> Genesis. Now after the fall, everyone basically turned away from God and did their own thing. And God saw all that he had made. And he wanted to do away with it. He said he couldn't be responsible for people anymore because they were just flesh. They weren't following his spirit. And this is a bit like what's happened. Well, not all these modernist philosophers didn't believe in God.
what they all have in common is that almost every one of them has rejected organised religion. And they never believe their focus turns to work and the world. When they don't have a religious life. We call it these days a work-life balance. You could probably say that all these modern philosophers were workaholics. It's always a, uh, a challenge to stay focused on the discipline of prayer, study, reflection. devotion and then work and then having relationships we had our labor day recently Apparently that was started by a guy, an immigrant from England, who didn't want our society to fall into a trap of Victorian England, but it overworked people. He believed there should be eight hours work, eight hours rest, and eight hours of life. And then it was a weekend.
job. So try and build it up to be as great as it possibly can be. Because that's what they believe in. a trap it was a trap for the people in Genesis which continues this theme we've had the Garden of Eden we've had the Flood and now we've got the Towers of Babel church and state in a letter and a pope referred to the war between the church and the state as being a modernist era there's not a correct relationship between the church and the state. Well, to block that relationship. Well, Pope Benedict has written about what a correct relationship is. It's takes a bit of uh, mental effort to work out what the right relationship might be. But Pope Benedict says it quite simply, if without the Creator a creature will disappear. Well, it's actually the Vatican Council too.
really events in Genesis after the Tower of Babel is uh, the dramatic disaster at Sodom and Gomorrah This is another instance where the people are not following God, who do whatever they want, and there's a natural disaster as a consequence. So that balance is lost again. And the final image I've got here is reading over old dreams. I was really surprised to see this one because I'd never been interested in John Keats, the poet. And I had this dream about John Keats's girlfriend's mother. And she's handing me a gift. said our Lord is more beautiful than silence Acknowledge. Mm -hmm. 